Hi everyone, David Peterson here. I'm in my studio today, and I know a lot of fans have asked about the architectural models that I make to help visualize and illustrate the world of Mouseguard. Um, so today's video is all about one of those models. Um, I've done blog posts and a few videos about my architectural models, um, but I know that this one actually hadn't gotten a proper blog post. Um, it was featured in the Tested.com video with Adam Savage on uh, at New York Comic Con. Um, and and get it, after getting home, I realized that I never did a real blog post about this one. So um, this is a column that was part of a coin hoard uh, chamber that was in a Legends of the Guard cover. And I was having a hard time visualizing this room. I wanted it to look like the treasure trove of, from a Tolkien story or a classic D&D adventure. Uh, and I knew that there would be just a pile of coins and then the body of a, of a long dead weasel um, but I needed some architecture in there and I didn't want it to be overly described but I didn't want to under describe it and kind of fake my way through it so I needed to build a model and the one that I built uh, instead of building a whole room I just built one column with the idea that I could draw out a grid on my uh, drawing table and then move it incrementally with a camera fixed take lots of photos and then in Photoshop, layer all those photos back together and have a complete room. Um, the inspiration for the room was a, a, an actual column that came out of a Masonic temple. Um, I used to work at an antique architectural salvage store in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and they had a, a column very much like this. Um, and so when it came time, I was thinking about different kind of columns and architecture and things that would be interesting in that, that column from my old workplace came to mind. Uh, so I started constructing this. Now, I know people are really flattering and say that my models are detailed and, and intricate, but uh, it's actually pretty simple. Um, it's made out of only three things. It's made out of chipboard down low. The dark brown parts are chipboard. Chipboard is um, what the back of sketch pads and drawing pads are made out of. In fact, whenever I finish a pad of Bristol board, I tear off the cover and keep the pad over in a, a little spot in the corner of my studio as uh, as scrap and, and material for making models. The next thing is basswood. Um, now basswood is a, is a nice clean wood that uh, is sold for a lot of doll hobby, uh, doll house making and hobby enthusiasts. Um, I buy it by the bag um, in these kind of random planks and, and sheets. Uh, I know you can buy specific sizes, but I, I like to get kind of the random grab bag because it gives me a little bit of everything. My local hardware store sells this uh, just like this. I, I just pack, picked up a, a new bag recently. Um, so you got chipboard, basswood, and then the last thing is paper. The, the arches here are just two-sided printed paper that I've glued together. And then the printed sections here are actually glued onto uh, the chipboard, the same chipboard material. Um, now some of the tricks for this piece uh, that I'll go over with you guys is that uh, I could not find in the grab bag or in my scrap drawer square stock to make these these vertical members. So instead, I'll get this close, see if you can see, I actually laminated, oop, there we go, I laminated three thinner pieces together to come up with something that was pretty close to square. Um, but I had to laminate all of those to get what I needed, um, which I think is an important thing when you're modeling. Uh, you don't always have exactly what you need. Sometimes you have to fabricate it. Sometimes you have to fabricate it more than you really should. Um, but instead of getting in the car, going to the hardware store, or, or you know, going out in the garage and milling a piece that was exactly the right uh, uh, dimensions that I needed, it was easier just to glue this stuff together. Now, speaking of the glues and the, the other materials used to put something like this together, um, I tend to use a lot of super glue for these and hot melt glue. Um, I do a little bit of either rubber cement or glue stick to get the, uh, to get the paper glued together and double sided or adhered to the chipboard. Um, to cut everything out, I'm for the most part using either an X-Acto blade or a utility knife. Sometimes I'll use a, um, an electric jigsaw that kind um, but uh, I don't think I did on this I, th I think 
I think this one was straightforward enough. I could just use hand tools. Um, but it's it's uh, it's the kind of thing that I needed because I couldn't visualize not only what the room would look like, but what angle I needed to show it from. Uh, you can get a lot of impact from what angle a scene is drawn from, wh where the where the viewer is, um, whether you're low or high or medium or uh, 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 tight or close or t tight or far away. Um, all of those things matter. Uh, they're storytelling, and instead of having to have a clear and perfect picture in my head or draw it all out um, and draw it over and over from different angles and different perspectives. Um, I can just make this model once, repeat it several times, put all the photos together, and then have a couple, have a high shot to look at, or have a medium shot to look at, have it coming from low up. Um, in this instance, I actually had to remove the column from where it should be in a few spots to make sure there was an open enough area to put everything that I needed to go in there. But uh, it's tricks like this that I think really help me not only to make Mouse Guard feel rich and real world and lived in, but um, they help me as an illustrator to push myself to tell a better story through visual storytelling. Um, that the angles and perspectives uh, that I'm choosing go a long way, not just to fit all the characters in and the word balloons, etc., and be, you know, believable because the perspective is right. But, but also that I'm choosing the right angles. I'm choosing the, the, the best opportunities uh, and how to frame a sequence. So I wanted to share this model with you. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope to do some more of these. Thanks.